A respected Oxford researcher, he says he is proof that the Yeti, the abominable snowman of the Himalayas, is in fact real and its descendants are alive. They came across a set of huge footprints that went away from them down the glacier and it left them completely mystified. I've collected hair samples from um, creatures that are thought to have been yetis. To find any footprints at such high altitude was simply inexplicable. So high above the tree line and so high above any human habitation. Now the DNA from those mysterious Himalayan hairs, he says, just proved a 100% match with an ancient polar bear that died on an Arctic island more than 40,000 years ago. The only animals that could even conceivably be on a glacier at this altitude. But the Sherpas knew exactly what they were, Yeti footprints. The Himalayas span across five different countries, Bhutan, India, Nepal, China, and Pakistan. It is absolutely huge, and it is the highest mountain range in the world. But we aren't here to talk about geography. Let's talk about the more important things. The Yeti, Abominable Snowman, Magoi, Mete, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's, there's plenty of different ways, but it is the most well-known cryptid in the entire world if you don't include something like Nessie and Bigfoot, which is really just Bigfoot. Yeti is incredibly popular in both sightings and pop culture, from video games, shows, movies, books, and even a Disney World attraction. I'll try to go through most of those later, but for now, let's discuss the more important question. What even is the Yeti? First off, I want to go through the different types of Yeti, or the different iterations. The word Yeti comes from Tibet, and bear with me right now because we're going to talk about these three different methods of translation and it completely confused me. And I spent a, a large chunk of my time just looking into these translation methods. The word Yeti in Tibet looks like this. I obviously don't know how to say it, but we can use something called widely transliteration. Wiley is used to transliterate, hopefully that's the last time I say that, Tibetan script using the letters available on a typical English typewriter. This isn't a way to replace how the word is pronounced, however it makes it easier to sort of understand in a way when you see it in your own language. We could also use something called Tibetan Pinyin, also known as ZWPY. This essentially just means Tibetan spelling. This is just Wiley, but it's actually used in China, and we could figure out what each part of the word means. So in Tibetan, it's this. In Wiley, it's this. And in ZWPY, it's, I could actually pronounce this one, kind of. It's Yachi. We can use this to see that Ya means rocky or rocky place, and Chi means bear. Which makes sense considering the Yeti is described as a large bear covered in snow. Other names given to the Yeti translate into similar things. Man, bear, wild man, jungle man, snowman. Sorry if this was a very long, drawn out explanation and if it was boring, but I found it super interesting with how much time I put into just looking into these. I would be damned if I didn't at least milk it a little bit. There are three different main varieties of the Yeti. Nyalmo, Chuti, and the Rangshim Bamboo. The Nyalmo seems to be more popular considering I could hardly find any information about the other two. Take this with a grain of salt if this is even true because of how little information I could find, but I scoured everywhere on the internet. The name was given to these creatures by the Tibetan Lama and says that the Tibetan people have always known of its existence. The Nyalmo has black fur and stands at about 15 feet, which is 4.5 meters, and even sometimes attacks other yeti in the area. The Chuti is 8.2 feet tall, 2.5 meters, and Rangshim Bamboo has red fur and is 4.9 feet tall, 1.5 meters. Each one of them are reported to smell terrible and are said to be strong, especially when it comes to launching rocks with ease, skill, and accuracy. There are other things out there also, 
saying that there's caves and tunnel systems made by them. But the records are very conveniently hidden or destroyed, which, like I said, are super convenient. In January of 1921, the Royal Geography Society set up the Mount Everest Committee to finance an expedition to attempt to scale the summit. However, due to the dangerousness of the task, the committee decided that the purpose of the mission should be to simply survey and conduct research on the mountain. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Howard Burry led the reconnaissance expedition that year, and he recorded all of his findings in the book Mount Everest, The Reconnaissance, 1921. Howard Burry wrote of the footprints that he thought were probably caused by a large, loping gray wolf, which in the soft snow formed double tracks rather like those of the barefooted man. Howard Burry also added that his guide believed it to be the Mato Kangmi, which translated to man bear snowman this name given was eventually turned into the abominable snowman after the members of the expedition were interviewed and the author mistranslated mato as filthy and then they changed filthy to abominable the belief of the yeti goes back pretty far honestly its roots run pretty deep it is believed that the yeti was once worshipped by pre-buddhists in nepal and india Eventually, the Yeti was included into Tibetan Buddhism because despite being non-human, he was human enough to be able to follow Dharma. That's right, he was expected to follow Buddhism. A Yeti. A Buddhist Yeti. And according to them, he did. They're even worshipped as a way to ward away evil spirits. More and more Westerners attempted to scale the mountains in the area, which helped increase the number of sightings reported. Many described strange tracks and seeing strange creatures. A member of the Royal Geography Society, which I mentioned earlier, believes to have seen one of these creatures. He watched it for about a minute from 200 to 300 yards away. Several hours after the creature left, him and his crew investigated the area. They found prints, however the prints were only 6 to 7 inches long. This is about half the size of an average male foot, which is strange considering the Yeti is said to be 15 feet tall. How would a 15 foot tall humanoid creature have such a small foot? I could easily sit here for several minutes just telling you all the people who simply observed or took pictures of footprints, but I will spare you the details. Let's move right on to possible explanations. Explanation you dumb mother f They include the misidentifications, hoaxes, and simple instances where someone finds evidence, like fur, which is never misproven for whatever reason. The footprint I mentioned before, that were described as 6-7 to seven inches long, could easily be explained by looking at a langur, which is a monkey that could very easily made a similar sized foot. Or even people who said they saw a large black animal at a distance, that could simply be a large bear. Despite all of this, some things can't exactly be explained, whether it's due to evidence simply not existing anymore, or just because we just can't. And I hope one day, we can finally say, it is, or was, real. A little side note here, I think the Yeti is my favorite cryptid because it's just one of those things where you believe it to be plausible because it's not exactly easy to conduct scientific research in the area. And it's just something that you just wish is true. Next, let's jump straight into the vast amount of media the Yeti is portrayed in. And believe me, there is a lot. Because there are so many, I'm going to go through some of my favorites, whether I just read about them or actually seen them before. First we got Half Human, a Japanese horror film directed by Ishiro Honda in 1955. Which I just think it sounds cool that there was a horror movie that has a yeti in it. Well, at least one of the first ones, and it's Japanese. I, I just thought it was neat. Hey, an abominable snowman! I will name him George and I will hug him and... Next we got The Abominable Snow Rabbit, which is a Looney Tunes short that follows Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck trying to get to Palm Springs, but after a turn of events, they run into The Abominable Snowman. Up next, we got Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in 1964, which I probably don't need to explain this one, but to be brief, Bumble was an abominable snowman, where he's a former antagonist, but not really. In Doctor Who, the abominable snowman, 
1967, and The Web of Fear 1968, Robot Yeti are used as servants to the main antagonist of each of the episodes. Welcome to the Himalayas! Monsters, Inc. in 2001, which is similar to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, where I probably don't have to describe it, the Yeti rescues the main characters after they get stranded in the Himalayas, who has an attachment towards lemon-flavored snow cones, which this one is by far my favorite because it's the one I'm most familiar with. I'm Josh Gates, and I'm on a hunt for the Yeti. In 2016, Expedition Unknown, yes, this is the second time, I believe, that they appeared in my videos, had a four-part special where Josh Gates explores the Himalayas, examines sacred artifacts, explores Mount Everest, and travels the forest of Bhutan, and then he goes back to the U.S. and scientists analyze the evidence he gathered. In the game, Mr. Nuts, a Yeti appears. I don't know the context, but the name was funny. Far Cry 4, the main character goes to the Himalayas to find a relic that turns people into yetis. In Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, there is a yeti couple who are on a snow-covered mountain hidden away. And finally, the Disney World attraction, Expedition Everest, there is a 20-foot tall Yeti animatronic, along with one that appears in the Matterhorn bobsled at Disneyland. I'll be honest, I got that whole list from Wikipedia, and I have no clue how they didn't add uh, Obama Snow, I think that's what he's called, from Pokemon. It's kind of half of his name, the, the Abominable Snowman, Obama, I, I don't get that, I just thought about that today. I thought that was strange. Lastly, I wasn't very too sure where to add this in the video, so I just decided to tack it on onto the end. But there's another type of Yeti, or a, a different cryptid that people group up with the Yeti, and it's the Chuchonya. I think that's how it's pronounced. So I don't butcher the name again, I'll just refer to him as the Siberian Snowman, which is his other name. Like the name implies, he is set to wander Siberia and is between 6 to 7 feet tall. The snowman seems to display many signs of intelligence, such as using animal skins as clothing and using weapons. They're depicted in many different ways, some more human and some more Bigfoot. This one is very strange to me and it pretty much confused me the entire time I kept reading about it. I don't really understand how it's grouped up with the Yeti, when the Yeti is all the way in the Himalayas and... This guy is in Siberia. I don't understand how they're just connected. And this one is significantly smaller unless you include the other smaller Yeti. And this one just sounds like a primitive human, which everyone basically agrees on. I just don't understand why it's compared. And it also confused me because out of all of the cryptids I read about, it convinced me the most because... I just find that there's a weird possibility that there is some sort of tribe out there that didn't progress or evolve the way humans did. I just find it possible that there's some type of um, Neanderthal, for example, that didn't progress the way like we did, but are still around, but they were frozen and they were melted or whatever. Or even they were in hiding in a place like Siberia where it's not the most explored place in the earth but i just i just thought it was very strange to read about and kind of surreal it sounded like i was reading a plot from a movie but at the same time you know people make stuff up so it could all yeah, it could all be fake it, it probably is i'll be i'll be honest it probably is the yeti on the other hand i i believe the yeti 100 percent that's a yeah that's about it's about all for for this video there was other things that i could have included like um there was something about a fake Yeti skull with hands or something like that. It's proven to be a hoax. I didn't really want to throw in a bunch of hoaxes in here. I, I didn't think it would it would fit well. Like I said, I, I like the Yeti. I believe in the Yeti. I, I didn't want to completely sour my, my taste. 
Like I said before, it's, it's hard to believe cryptids anymore, so I'll just ignore it. You know, ignorance is bliss. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Share. I don't know. Hopefully see you in the next one.